Bishop Rolando Alvarez of the Diocese of Matagalpa in Nicaragua is currently under house arrest. He's uh, accused by the Nicaraguan government of inciting violence after he protested the closure of five Catholic radio stations. Here to bring us up to date on the situation and discuss the circumstances leading to the bishop's arrest, I'm joined by human rights activist, executive vice president of Freedom House in Washington, D.C., Nicole Bibbins Sadaka. Nicole, thanks for being here. You've been following this story. Uh, Bishop Alvarez has been under house arrest since August 4th for protesting the government's closure of these Catholic radio stations. Uh, the closures came after those stations dared to air reports critical of President Daniel Ortega and his wife, Vice President Rosario Mario. What do you make of these charges and the timing of the arrest? How does peaceful protest against a government policy equal incitement? Well, first, let me just say thank you very much for giving us a chance to share our analysis and our thoughts about the situation. We have seen a mm -hmm. tremendous crackdown in Nicaragua on a number of of, of uh, clergy and others within the Catholic Church, which is, is really problematic from our perspective for a number of reasons. It's obviously a limitation of the religious freedom within the country that we're seeing um, radio stations that can't broadcast. We're seeing people who are not able to celebrate mass and to be able to um, reach out to their congregants. But we're also concerned because we recognize the vibrancy of the Catholic Church and of, of, of uh, faith leaders as part of a civil society that's absolutely necessary in the country. And what we're seeing across the board is the Nicaraguan government going after those actors, whether they're in the church or outside of the church, who are willing to raise their voice to express concern about the limitations of freedom, which are just unfolding every day in Nicaragua. And mm. um, we're deeply concerned about Bishop Alvarez's um, uh, the, the house arrest and that he has been he has been the subject of police harassment for not just since August, uh, August 4th, but certainly since yeah. um, since May, when we have seen um, he announced his hunger strike and that we have seen um, the, the government go after him consistently, as well as others in the Catholic Church. Yeah. The bishop is appealing to authorities. Uh, he's calling his treatment harassment and asking for religious freedom to be respected. Uh, does that resonate at all with this government? We are not seeing that the Nicaraguan government cares about religious freedom or freedom of any sort uh, right now. Mm -hmm. We are seeing certainly the limitation both, again, of Bishop Alvarez, but also Father Padilla, who was surrounded by police in his church in May. We saw the expulsion right. of the Vatican ambassador um, in March. And so we've seen a continuous harassment. And so we recognize that the government has shown that it is not fully committed or partially committed even to religious freedom in the country. Um, and, yeah, and a, religious freedom is, a, is one main concern, but just this, this opportunity to express yourself freely, the freedom of expression is something which is under, mm -hmm. under consistent attack in the country. Yeah, and Ortega has a long history of yes. uh, tension and uh, opposition to the Catholic Church in his country, even though it's a huge population, which we'll get to in a moment. Uh, Bishop Alvarez has also spoken out for a long time against this regime. Is he a, paying a price for that? Is that what this is really about? They found a moment where they could sort of point to, to something and call it incitement of violence or incitement of protest. Absolutely. Um, you know, we we're concerned that they are making up charges to give the pretense that there is a legitimate concern mm -hmm. with Bishop Alvarez's actions. But what we've seen is those things that he has done are consistent with with um, religious freedom standards are consistent with um, with freedom of expression standards and him being able to just celebrate mass or him being able to speak out. Those are a natural part of what we would expect from faith yeah. leaders in any country. Yeah. The, the, and look, there's a huge Christian population in this country, half of which of that Christian population is Catholic, 55 yeah. percent. Where are the people? Are there are there are they afraid or are they standing up to defend this bishop and the freedom of their faith? Well, we, we recognize that there are many people who have who are fearful of this regime because the regime mm -hmm. has very clearly gone after very publicly um, political activists. It's gone, obviously, uh, against faith leaders, mm -hmm. Catholic 
um, leadership and clergy and has gone against civil society. We've seen, you know, over 1,200 organizations that were shuttered, um, just non-governmental organizations doing the service to the people um, shuttered over the last several months. And so understandably, people are are scared and they're concerned about raising their voice. At the same time, we see a lot of Nicaraguan um, activists and citizens that are raising their voice and pushing back on the government's repression. Hmm. Does he have any sympathizers in the government? I mean, I know I know Bishop Alvarez has been receiving statements of solidarity from his brother bishops in Nicaragua and surrounding Central American nations. Uh, will, will the support from the church hold? Does it hold any sway in this in this uh, environment with Ortega's government? Well, we we are certainly hopeful that the solidarity among bishops and also the solidarity that we're seeing from external sources, right, out, outside of uh -huh. the outside of Nicaragua will be important because it will also show the Nicaraguan government that it's not just one bishop that is of concern, that this is something where a whole network of people in the country and outside of the mm -hmm. country stand for religious freedom and they stand for mm -hmm. um and they stand for the right of this individual but certainly of the whole community individuals and the community yeah. as a whole to raise their voice well why do you think this is getting virtually no coverage i mean it's very it's very the scant mm -hmm. coverage is shocking to me it's unfortunate it's unfortunate that that such persecution doesn't get to the front page every day and there's always reasons for it we're seeing persecution of religious actors around the world that doesn't ever make the headlines some of it is that mm. we're seeing the nicaraguan government is persecuting so many different individuals that it almost tends to fall off the radar at times i also right. think these types of stories are not holding sway necessarily with um with listeners and and watchers around the world because there there's a lot of other things coming at us right now but it's so important to remember that these are individual people who are courageously raising their voice to push back on a government that has shown its commitment to silence people to restrict people's religious freedom to restrict their freedom of expression and that type of courage is what will eventually bring change in a country but right now is being met with such persecution yeah, well, it's also this hardening secularism you see all around the world, where this kind of the religious expression is considered something dirty or second rate, and so everybody just kind of looks away. But someone else's religious and human rights expression gone today portends yours tomorrow if you're not vigilant about it. Uh, how do you see this playing out, Nicole? Where is the Vatican, by the way? I know the United States has been vocally opposed to this. Where is the Vatican? You know, I, what, we really believe that every nation, every nation should be raising its voice at this time. And again, as, the, as you just made the point, this isn't about the religious freedom just of this individual. It's about freedoms in general, because if we can silence one bishop today, then we can certainly silence an entire church or we can in, in, in silence an entire community. And it's really about creating the space and um, respecting the freedoms for all people because if one group is silenced, then there's another one that comes right behind it. It's going mm -hmm. to take external pressure, and whether that's from the Vatican or the United States or other countries in the region, it's going to be extraordinarily important that the Nicaraguan government hear very, very clearly that this is not acceptable behavior and that they cannot simply pressure one individual or a number of leaders in this community and get away with it. Yeah, no, I, I I don't understand the silence from the Vatican. I mean, look, if you're losing if you're losing your managers, if Chick Fil A were losing their managers in a certain <laughs> territory, they would be raising voice to say, "Leave our managers alone." But for whatever reason, the Vatican is unconcerned about this, as they are about their leadership in China. I might add, but we'll leave that for another day. Nicole Bibbin Sadaka of Freedom House, thank you so much for your insights. Thank you for having me.